What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another shoe review and on today's video we're looking at the new Ultra Boost Lite from Adidas. And actually this is a first because I don't think the word Lite has ever been attributed to an Ultra Boost shoe. Let's get into it. Okay, why don't we just back it up a couple of years because a couple of years ago I reviewed the Ultra Boost 21 and in the Ultra Boost 21 they had made some changes, they had added more boost, I think it was 6% more boost than the Ultra Boost 20 and the Ultra Boost 21 was the first year that the Ultra Boost started to look like this shoe. And I have to be honest with you, the Ultra Boost 21 was not my favourite shoe. In fact, if I'm completely honest with you, I think it has been my least favourite shoe and there were several reasons for that and we'll get into those reasons when I tell you about the Ultra Boost Lite. But Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me a pair of the Ultra Boost Lite for review. Of course, they don't have any say into my opinions of the shoe, but I was compelled to see if Adidas had made any changes from the Ultra Boost 21, and I'm happy to say they have. But let's get started with price, because that has not changed. The Ultra Boost Lite is going to cost you $190. Now, that's a lot of money, but on the bright side, $190 was the same price as the Ultra Boost 22 release price and the Ultra Boost 21 release price. So it's good that they're not raising the price just because time goes on. So I guess, relatively speaking, the Ultra Boost Lite is a much better deal than the Ultra Boost 21 was, in more ways than one. So the stack height of the Ultra Boost Lite is particularly hard to find, but to me it looks very similar to the Ultra Boost 21 and the Ultra Boost 22. If it is the same as it looks, we have 33 millimeters in the heel, 23 millimeters in the forefoot. So 10 millimeter drop, pretty big drop, but that drop is going to contribute to a pretty comfortable ride. Now onto the main thing that I think you guys have been waiting for, and with a name like the Ultra Boost Lite, we're going to expect this shoe to be pretty light. And before I tell you the way, I want you to keep in mind that this is relative to previous iterations of the Ultra Boost. So Adidas is claiming that the Ultra Boost Lite in the US Men's Size 9 will tip the scale at 10.3 ounces or 293 grams. However, in my size, a US Men's Size 13, it tips the scale at 13 ounces or 369 grams. And I know some of you are probably shaking your head saying, Matt, 13 ounces or 369 grams doesn't seem light. But let me just contrast this to the Ultra Boost 21 that I wore a couple of years ago. In my size, the Ultra Boost 21 tipped the scale at 448 grams or 15.8 ounces. Can you believe it? I tell you what's not surprising and that's the Ultra Boost 21 was not my favorite shoe. So to say that the Ultra Boost Lite is a big improvement is an understatement. In fact I'd say it's a 19.34% improvement which is huge and 19.34% is how much lighter the Ultra Boost Lite is over the Ultra Boost 21. So this is the lightest Ultra Boost ever and simply because of the weight savings that you're getting with the Ultra Boost Lite I can safely say that this is the only Ultra Boost I want you to ever consider buying. Now the Adidas marketing machine says that the Ultra Boost Lite is built for ultimate cushioning, responsiveness and comfort. And while ultimate cushioning, comfort and responsiveness may be a little bit of an exaggeration, it's actually not too bad. Okay, let's start at the top. Let's work our way down and then I'll tell you about the ride. Now with the Ultra Boost Lite we have to start with the upper first because it is a prime knit plus upper and the prime knit just means that it's all been knitted in one piece. Now most shoes are made in several different pieces and then they're sewn together to create the upper but by doing a one piece knit upper it uses less material and produces is less waste. So when you put your foot into the Ultra Boost Lite, it is like sliding your foot into a sock. Now when we look at the heel collar, it's fairly thin here on the front part of the heel collar where it comes into the tongue area and then we have a padded bolster on the medial side and on the lateral side and they kind of come to a point in the back and this bolster is actually pretty pronounced. In fact you can see it right here on the outside and it does create a nice cushion kind of pinch on the back of your foot just holding your foot in place. It's actually very comfortable. Now clearly this big Achilles flare is quite a prominent part of the design of the shoe. So clearly that's going to take some pressure off of your Achilles tendon and I do like the design aesthetic to it. The Ultra Boost Lite, just like previous Ultra Boosts, do have this heel clip which is what Adidas is using as kind of like their heel counter so it doesn't come all the way around the back. We can actually push this down quite a bit but because of this heel clip keeping it rigid right here at the base of your foot does lock your foot in nicely. Oh by the way if you do have a mind of saving the planet or protecting the environment this Prime Knit Plus Upper actually uses at least 50% recycled materials and uses poly ocean plastic in Adidas's endeavor to end plastic waste. So it's not nothing. Now if you have ever seen an Ultra Boost shoe before you know that they are using these plastic cages and at this point I have talked about how getting rid of them would save weight but they're still here and they do serve to make the Ultra Boost very recognizable. It also provides a little rigidity to this Prime Knit Plus upper so when your foot goes in the laces are actually tied to these plastic cages and when your foot goes in and you lace it down and cinch it down these plastic cages actually 
fold around your foot nicely. And the shoe is actually very comfortable and secure. And security is something that I don't always get when I'm using a shoe with a booty sock-like upper. But I was able to get a good lockdown and my foot felt like they were part of the shoe, which is a good thing. Now, let me tell you something about the Ultra Boost 21, which they have changed and made better in the Ultra Boost Lite. They may have also changed it in the Ultra Boost 22, but because I didn't run in it, I really can't say. But in the Ultra Boost 21, there seemed to me to be just a little bit too much volume in the upper. So when I cinched it down, it seemed like the prime knit upper would buckle a little bit and it would create pressure down the top of my foot. But at least in the Ultra Boost Lite, it appears to me that they have reduced the volume of the upper. So when my foot goes in and I cinch it down, it actually feels like I'm putting my foot into a sock that is comfortable. So with that said, in my size, a US men's size 13, it does fit true to size. Moving on down to the magic, this is the main selling point of this shoe, Adidas's new light boost. And you can see they've labeled it right here on the medial side and on the bottom of the shoe, light boost. They don't want you forgetting that this is light boost. This is lighter, lighter equals better. Now, boost has been around a little while. I think it came out in 2013. And obviously in the last 10 years, they've made some changes to it, especially this year when they have totally reformulated it to make it so much lighter. But Boost is ultimately an ETPU foam. An ETPU is an expanded thermoplastic polyurethane. And in layman's terms, thermoplastic polyurethane particles are expanded to form closed cells around pockets of air. And because of the engineering process that Boost goes through, Adidas says that running on Boost is like running on tiny precision engineered clouds. But running in the Ultra Boost light is not what I would imagine running on clouds is like. It's not as soft and pillowy as I would expect a cloud to be. But hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's finish talking about the shoe, then we'll talk about the ride. Let's come down to the outsole. Adidas is using continental natural performance rubber. Clearly we have a lot of good coverage from the heel all the way up to the forefoot and it provided exceptional grip. I can't say anything bad about the grip that I experienced on the Ultra Boost Lite. Now you notice on my colorway we have this yellow plastic right underneath the rubber, right between the outsole rubber and the Boost midsole. That's Adidas's LEP system. LEP is L-E-P, stands for Linear Energy Push and it has been completely redesigned for the Ultra Boost Lite. They say it's been redesigned to optimize performance and work in harmony with the new Lite Boost. And ultimately the LEP system acts as sort of a plate in the bottom of your shoe to give it just a little more rigidity. Now, if I bend it up, you can actually see that it's not that rigid, but because of the LEP system, it's going to make the shoe a little more responsive when you're coming through your gait cycle. And for that reason, it actually makes the Ultra Boost Lite quite a utilitarian shoe. Now, I do have to say that I am coming at this shoe as a runner. I'm looking at it like a runner would look at this shoe, and I've been talking to you as a runner would, and the LEP system actually contributes to give the Ultra Boost Lite a more responsive feel than it would have if it didn't have the LEP system. But this is ultimately a daily trainer. This is something that when I take it out, I'm going to be taking it out on recovery days, on easy days, and certainly on longer efforts when I want a little more cushioning. I'm probably not going to pick up this shoe for faster days and certainly not for race days. There are just other options out there that are definitely going to work better. But because of the LEP system, definitely makes the Ultra Boost Lite a little more responsive. Now, the whole Ultra Boost line has been extremely popular as a fashion shoe, and I think it still fits that bill. People that have already been fans of the Ultra Boost, I think they are really going to like this update. It's much lighter than previous versions, and when you put something lighter on your feet, it's going to feel better in all situations. However, you watch this you are probably a runner and because of this weight drop because of the reduced volume in the upper which actually makes it fit my foot so much better I feel confident saying that this is actually a pretty good daily trainer now it's not the lightest but when you do buy a daily trainer you're not looking for the lightest shoe possible and well after my experience with the Ultra Boost 21 I thought I would never run in another Ultra Boost shoe I'm glad I got the chance to test out the Ultra Boost Lite because it has changed my opinion now I disagree with Adidas it is not the ultimate in cushioning comfort and responsiveness but it is fairly cushioned it's a little firmer ride than you would probably expect seeing this big chunk of midsole foam, but it's not a firm ride by any means. It is certainly very comfortable and it's responsive enough for what this shoe is going to be used for. So guys, I want to hear from you. Have you ever run in a pair of Ultra Boost? If you have, what do you think of them? And does the idea of an Ultra Boost being a lot lighter, does that make you want to try the Ultra Boost line? I'd love to hear from you. And if you have made it to this point in the video, first of all, thank you very much. Second of all, why don't you drop the dolphin emoji in the comments so I know that you've made it all the way to the end of the video. And that's obviously because by eliminating plastic from the oceans, we're saving the dolphins. My name is Matt. This has been my review of the Adidas Ultra Boost Lite. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.